Today, we're gonna find out if Mystery Ranch packs are all they're cracked up to be. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Welcome to another episode here at Gideon's Tactical. Welcome to this amazing scenic view. Guys, we've had a fantastic trek up to this Alpine Lake here in the Rocky Mountains. The, okay, we're gonna talk about packs today. Packs are just a, a little part of getting out there. Get out there, regardless of the pack that you have. But uh, I purchased the Mystery Ranch Scree 32 liter pack recently because I've seen a lot of stuff about them. I've heard a lot of really good things. So I wanted to see more for myself are they really all they're cracked up to be? Are there aspects that I would like to see changed? Or are they amazing, mind-blowing packs? I wanna answer all that in this video for you today. We're gonna to run it up against some other favorite kind of uh, technical day packs that I own, particularly like the Mountain Smith uh, 35 liter Mayhem, and we're gonna look at some VanQuest packs. So we're gonna do a lot of head-to-head -head today and really see if Mystery Ranch is producing something special or if they're just another run-of-the-mill backpack company. We're gonna decide and discuss all of that today. Plus, as an added bonus, we're gonna answer some of your questions from the mailbag, so stay tuned. So let's go ahead and jump to it and see what this pack has to offer. All right, so we're gonna hit this guy here. Uh, basic specs for us is that it's gonna be 26 inches high, 14.5 inches wide, and 11 inches deep. So you're actually getting a lot of space in this 32 liter pack. Now the material, I was, I was I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting. It's heavy duty. It feels really good. It's 420 denier aerobic nylon fabric. I have seen that a couple times with some Mountain Smith bags. Very tough, very durable. I like that. Um, I, what is, is it on par with say like 600 denier Cordura that we're going to talk about with some other you know packs today? I, I'm not sure. It, it is definitely feeling beefy and heavy duty and much better um, denier and um, uh, durability wise than just say like a normal 420 uh, denier nylon. It is double layered on the bottom, so you're technically getting whatever that would be, like 440 or 840 denier on the bottom of the pack. And we got these waterproof layered YKK zippers, which is pretty sweet. Now, um, Mystery Ranch is known for kind of doing this Y setup, where you grab right here, you pull, and you can get into the just the top loading portion of the bag. Then if you really need to get in on it, you can unzip this bad boy and get all the way down through the main compartments here. So that's kind of their claim to fame. That's one of the things that a lot of their packs offer. Now with this design, what we have on either side are really large uh, mesh, kind of thick, thick mesh uh, water bottle pouches. So that'll handle your Nalgene bottles, large 32 ounce or 48 ounce, you know, three and a half inch diameter, no problem. Reinforced lips right here, but no shock cord to worry about. And those will be ambidextrously provided on either side. Then what we have here are these two compression straps with really heavy duty plastics, giving us these two cross compression straps on either side. Great for lashing other gear too as well. And then two sets of daisy chain on either side that you could put carabiners, uh, you know, attach ropes, different things like that. Uh, double stitched or even triple stitched right here on each loop. That's gonna go daisy chained vertical on either side of the bag. Now to use this vertical zipper appropriately, you are gonna have to disconnect these compression straps. So that could be a you know, winner or a loser for you to open it up and then get all the way to the bottom of the bag. Um, you know, if it was on the side or, you know, top loading, you might be able to get in a little bit differently. And by top loading, I mean like it unzips and goes off to the side or something like that. This is top loading, obviously, like we just showed you. Then as we open the main compartment here, you can get a lot of gear, obviously, 
when we went on our trek, I had all the, my camera gear and survival gear and all that. Um, this is just, you know, for us to see afterwards. But you are gonna get that really nice deep sleeve right here for your bladders. You have ambidextrous ports on either side, a good hanger, and that's about it. I would have liked to see a little more organization in this main compartment. Right here on the sides would have been really nice to maybe have some stash pouches. I know they have that on some of their other designs, so that would have been super cool. Even some mesh pockets, so you could organize a little bit more would have been a benefit. It's just a dump compartment. On our top lid here, we have two uh, staggered or on top of each other compartments. Again, YKK zippers, nice big, large flaps to keep rain out and that type of thing. So on the upper portion right here is a smaller compartment, great for sunglasses. And then on the lower portion here, we have a very large lid pocket that you can see there. They got really nice tabs here as well that you can attach stuff or when it comes time to close, you just grab. But it has a very heavy duty mesh bottom floor that you can actually see into the main compartment or if you're opening the lid, you can see through so you can see what's in there. All right, so let's go ahead and break down price here real quick. Now, this is gonna cost you about 180 bucks. That's what I paid for it at a local sporting goods store. To my knowledge, they're not yet available on Amazon. Mystery Ranch does have some of their other gear. So I'm gonna have some Mystery Ranch items, and if I do see this pop up in the future, uh, this scree on uh, Amazon, I'll have a link there. I will have some links to some other uh, countries like backcountry.com, and there's some other uh, websites that do carry this, so that if you are interested in this pack by at the end of the video, you can just use those hyperlinks. I will have hyperlinks on it to Amazon Blade HQ for uh, the other competitive of options that I'm going to discuss here in just a moment from VanQuest and Mountain Smith and just some other topics to give you um, some food for thought. So I will offer those below in those links. Thank you guys for your support through all the different links that we offer to you. But for $180, that's a lot of money for a 32 liter pack. So right out of the gate, you got to really decide how often are you really using this size of pack. Now, maybe you are a person that's out there literally every weekend. You're hitting, you know, um, alpine trails, you're hiking all over the place, and a, a backpack is a vital part of your life. Then maybe $180 is absolutely there. You know, maybe you're out getting able to get out a couple times a year. Is $180 really the right thing to spend? Maybe not. I'm gonna give you some other options as we discuss the the uh, yoke and carry system compared to um, some of the other backpacks I've been kind of alluding to throughout this video. I do also wanna let you know that they do have a female version of this pack. I believe they call it the Cree. Everything's exactly the same except they have a couple different color combinations and it's just cut out on the straps a little bit different to fit the female body. So those women out there or those dudes who are watching, and you maybe wanna get a pack for yourself, you wanna get the Scree for you and the, the Cree for you know, your um, girlfriend, spouse, whatever, then there is that option as well. All right, folks, let's go ahead and answer a few questions here from the mailbag. And our first one is from the Calacara 131. They ask, how do you think you would do if you were on the show alone? That's a great question. I've seen a few episodes of it. I'm actually, with my life and time management, I don't have a lot of time to do that if it's not on like, um, uh, Amazon or on Netflix. I'm probably not going to watch it. I don't have cable or, you know, um, normal TV, so to speak. Um, I know the concept. I've watched probably about six episodes. I don't know. I probably wouldn't win, um, to be honest with you guys. I am not a survivalist. I would love to be, and if I have time in the future to really take some classes and really hone those skills, awesome. I'm a gear reviewer, and I think that's a topic that I'll probably talk deeper in another video, but um, I know enough you know, to get by, and I know enough to probably survive for a couple days, maybe a week if I had to, but to just last for you know weeks and weeks and weeks on end, my personality's not great for that. I love talking with people. I have an outgoing personality in general, um, and, uh, as a, as a gear and gear tester, I am not a survivalist. And I think that gets blended sometimes. I think there are survivalists that have YouTube channels and then they try to review gear and they're critical about everything because they're viewing it from like a literally, like I'm gonna live off of this for the next 20 years with this knife or tool and it's not gonna last that long or whatever. And that's fine. And then there are YouTubers who are just gear reviewers who don't really, they're not really survivalists that think they are because they're in, you know, the, the um, the environment i guess and so they think like oh i know enough i could survive forever and i don't know how well they would really do with that and so they 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 don't know enough to survive but they kind of act like it so i think there's a blending of there i am totally honest with you guys i'm just a goof who likes the outdoors who has a camera who started a channel that succeeded that's all it is um, and i just give you my data points my info and i'm more of like a backpacker 
um, adventurer. I like having my stoves and my tents and that type of stuff. And if I had to in a pinch, probably survive. But uh, trying to live on, in alone and trying to survive for the longest period possible, that'd be really, I'd have to take a lot of time and a lot of practice and hone a lot of skills that I don't currently have to win. And that first question flows perfectly into our next question, which comes from Caleb Payne. And he asks, what are your thoughts about using a bow drill to start a fire? Do you use that technique or no? And tell us why. Great question. Um, I have never, one time we tried to do a, a push, I guess, friction fire, you know? Um, and I think we got some smoke one time. It's just my time is so limited uh, and I know that that is a skill that takes time to practice that I, at this phase of my life, I just don't have time to hone that skill. I would love to get to do that. I just need to take the time to do it and I just haven't done it. So no, I'm, I, if you were to say, Aaron, do, do a bow drill fire, I would probably fail or we'd be here for like two days before we get it going. Um, and I would burn so much energy that I'd rather just use a fire steel or a uh, Bic lighter or matches. So it's literally on my end, it's, I, I wouldn't say laziness, but it's just, time management and that's just something I, I have not taken the time and that skill to learn I want to at some point and maybe down the line we'll do that together here on the channel uh, but for now it's just something that I'm not going to try and attempt or pretend and that's the thing guys I don't want to pretend to you like I'm some survivalist I know exactly what I'm talking about watch this whoosh, you know and do some movie magic and I spend you know six hours in the backyard trying to do a bow drill hole cut it and be like look I can do a bow drill fire in one sh in one sitting I'm not that guy someone else wants to do that great that's fine I'm not that person and I can't do that. So I'm not gonna pretend that I can do that and try and psych you guys out. So um, that's me and that's me just being real. Uh, I would probably die if I was left up to that or it would be a very, very long process. And I'm just being real, just being transparent with you guys. I'm a gear reviewer, not a survivalist. So folks, I hope you guys are enjoying the mailbag as much as I am. It's a total blast. If you want to get involved in the mailbag, in the comments below in this video, just put hashtag mailbag and I'll take a look. And if there's a question that pops out to me that I want to answer live on an upcoming video, you might get your name called out and get your ans question answered live. So continue asking those questions and let's continue the conversation. Love them or hate them, I'm still rocking the GI Joe limited edition knock around sunglasses. And you guys have seen this throughout the video, throughout many videos. Some of you guys love them and want to know where I picked them up. Some of you guys are like, dude, get rid of those sunglasses. I am going to be getting some different pairs. We'll rotate them in. But you know what? Some of it's just my style. I just like something that's lime green, that's got some crazy colors to it. But the thing that I want to uh, let you know about is that we just got an affiliate program with knock around sunglasses. So now you can not only pick up some really functional, really fun sunglasses for really inexpensive prices. I think everything on their website is under 50 bucks and they have a lot of limited run stuff like these gi joes i've seen hot wheels i've seen shark week i've seen all kinds of cool stuff that they're doing uh, but they also have a custom store that you can customize your sunglasses to exactly your needs what you would be interested in and i really like them because for me personally i'm not somebody who likes to throw down like 200 on a pair of sunglasses i just don't understand that um for those who are willing to do that, rock on. But this has all the UV protection I need. They work great. There are lots of options out there. And so um, well, you're going to see these a lot more. I'll just kind of be throwing them up there. But in the links below now, we have Knock Around's a sunglass link that we'll be sharing with you guys on a regular basis. And if you want to purchase through there, it will help support the channel. We'll get that small kickback from the purchase. And it'll help me just another way to continue to do what we do here. So thank you guys for your support through the Knock Around links now, as well as through Blade HQ and Amazon. All right, folks, so I'll be honest with you, compared to other packs that I own, when it comes to actual compartments and layout and materials, it's good, but there's nothing that really you know stands out from the crowd for me. Uh, the layout is simple, effective, but I have plenty of other packs, including, as an example, my Ibex series from uh, VanQuest. Amazing materials right around the same price point for the 26 liter and the 35 liter will be about $10 more then this pack will be, and you're getting 500 denier Cordura fabric, you're getting way more organization, you're getting very similar design features, kind of a technical crossover pack, um, and uh, it's gonna have just way better layout to carry gear in different ways that this scree won't offer to you. And then my Mountain Smith uh, 35 liter Mayhem, 
is a fantastic pack as well. Gonna save you about $70. You know, they come in about $100 to $120 for those. 600 denier Cordura fabric, uh, a little bit better on the layout, has some different options that in my mind just seem to meet a niche a little bit better for me. When again, I'm talking about the back compartment. But this is where I'm seeing a difference with this Mystery Ranch pack. I've carried tons of packs, almost every company under the sun I've used. And on the trek that we did, we went round trip uh, just over uh, 13 miles. Uh, and we did about 2,000 feet of elevation. So in the Rocky Mountains, I mean, that's a lot. And with a load of about 20 pounds um, with me uh, for this particular trek, I got to tell you that this was the most, most organic and contouring bag I own. Uh, not that those other bags that I listed aren't good. They are definitely good and, and can carry a lot of weight for long distances. But by the end of the trip, I literally had to remind myself I had a backpack on. That's how good this contoured to my body. Now what this has is a really nice yoke system with really wide shoulder straps. You won't find the, this width on a lot of other gear. It does taper down as it goes, but I mean, this really carried my load extremely well. Has a nice sternum strap that you can, uh, has kind of a unique tassel system here, but you can detach it and then lower it down. And I had plenty of room. I mean, this is a lot, a lot of room. Usually I'm maxed out at the lowest point because of my body size, but th this gives me a whole nother, you know, four or five inches to work with. And this was run it riding just fine here. Um, and then, you know, you got your normal compression straps to pull up on your shoulders, all that. Uh, you got your uh, waist strap, which was somewhat small. So I wasn't actually expecting a lot of load bearing capability, but it actually worked really well in carrying and hugging the, the pack to my body, pull towards you, you know, straps. Uh, the pockets are lackluster. Wasn't super excited about that. You can get about one cliff bar in there, maybe a set of keys. You're not going to get most smartphones these days. Um, you're not going to really get any sort of, you know, full-size multi-tool really even in there. These are very small um, pockets. I would have liked to see them either have like a Molly attachment because, you know, Mystery Ranch does do a lot of that type of thing or something else uh, for that because it's kind of a waste of space. I have a lot of other like those VanQuest uh, bags that have Molly here that I can attach my medical kit to the outside of the bag that I really like. There, there really wasn't that option. So in my mind, it's fine, but I would have liked to see something a little bit different with the, the organization on the waist straps. But really, it's their um, sizing and suspension system in here. So unlike those two other brands, VanQuest and Mountain Smith, uh, this actually has different sizes you can purchase from small to medium, medium to large, and large to extra large. So three different body sizes, which is great. You usually don't find that on this size of pack. You can find that in big giant, you know, backpacking size packs, like they're like 50, 60, 70 liters. But this 32 liter has three different size uh, frames to choose from. So I went with my extra large to extra large just because of my body type, and that would be uh, 21 to 24 inches or 53 to 50, uh, 61 centimeters. Um, and what, how this works without going into a ton of detail, you can see this gap right here, which didn't cause any problems, but this is actually a track that this entire yoke will slide up and down. And it has a polymer frame inside that contours up onto your shoulders. And to get access to that, you, re you loosen up these two compression straps here and you can actually see this Velcro, hopefully you guys can see it this Velcro panel back here, and it's attached down below. And then I lift up and here is my polymer plastic frame. So I detach that, you break the Velcro and it will slide up and down on that little yoke system there and give you the um, distance that you need. Now you'll need a partner to adjust it and I'm not gonna go into all those details, but I was super impressed with how this was able to contour perfectly to my body. And again, the main point being with a heavier, you know, 20 pound load with camera gear and food and, you know, uh, medical kit and survival kit and water, uh, that after almost 14 miles, I did not even remember that I had a pack on it. That is epic. And that is where I see value in this design over some of the other uh, models from Mountain Smith and VanQuest and Kelty and some of those other companies that we've tested at Osprey in the past. They cannot compete with comfortability of the pack. Uh, the layout of the actual compartments back here isn't anything special in my opinion. Well, folks, time for us to bring this video to a close. Now, originally I was buying this bag kind of to diss on it. I was like $180 for a 32 liter pack that's just like a dump pack with a V zipper or Y zipper um, and the other features. I'm like, I'm just not getting it. Um, I'm like, if I need a, a technical pack like this and I want to save a little money, I can get a 600 denier Cordura Mount, uh, Mountain Smith 
Mayhem 35 and it's gonna be a fantastic bag. And if I need something a little bit more organizational and I wanna spend 180 to $200, well then I'll go with a VanQuest Ibex series. But when I got back to the car after those 13 miles, carrying all that gear and forgetting even really that I had a pack on, no rubbing, no wearing, no exhaustion, no so shoulder fatigue, you know, you're not sitting there and kinda like, get this thing off of me, I can't wait to take it off. I was literally like, I cannot even, re I don't even realize I have a pack on. It is mind boggling. So. The yoke and carry system are amazing. The bag itself is ho-hum at best and doesn't really have anything out of the ordinary to offer and you're gonna pay for this bag. So you really gotta decide, guys, I'm on the fence with this thing. I am gonna keep it in the system for long, long treks that I know I need to carry comfort where comfort is more important than like organization. Um, it does not trump my other two bags. I'm still keeping my Mayhem 35 and I'm still keeping my Adback series just because of how much they can do for me but this does have a niche but i think it's a very tight niche in my opinion to really justify the price to lack of organization in the bag. So I hope this video has helped you guys out make that determination for yourself. That's what I always wanna do here is give you the data points and info so you can decide, yep, that's the bag for me or nope, I need something else. So thank you so much guys. Please subscribe if you're not a current subscriber and become part of the GT family. You current subscribers are amazing and thank you for your continued support. We're throwing videos up like this every single week. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook. That's a great way to see what's up and coming. Communicate with me in a different way. Finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. See you out there.